You can see when he comes inside that the cornerback tries to match right away. And you can see a really quick pass out there can basically beat the coverage like nothing. Where these guys just run into one another. And you can see this guy gets wide open because the cornerback and the receiver cutting across just knocked that guy right off the off the mark. He's going against an elite cornerback and he just, just blows right through him. And you can see he's got like 5 to 10 yards of separation right away. Making this a very easy one play touchdown. This route here might be just about every defense in the game. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing the Mad Cheese as always. Got a full offensive breakdown of my new favorite offense from my Gun Wing Flex offset. If you guys didn't catch my last two gameplays, I used this brand new offense out of the Denver Broncos ebook that I put out uh, earlier in the year. And basically, it's probably my new favorite offense. So I'm going to put out a full breakdown of this offense because even though I'm going to use this in a lot of gameplays coming up and I've already put it out in two, I can't control what my opponent does in a game. I can't control what defenses they call and stuff like that. So I really can only show uh, the plays based off of what defenses they call. In those two gameplays, which I will have links in the description for if you guys want to check them out, I already showed a cover two one-play touchdown. I already showed a cover three one-play touchdown. I showed some cover zero one-play touchdowns. And I think a man cover one one-play touchdown in just two videos. But there's so much more this offense can do. So I'm going to make a full breakdown with all that stuff right here in one place. Like I said, it's my new favorite offense. It's one of the best offenses in the game out of my Denver Broncos ebook, which you guys can check out right now, by the way, them or any of my ebooks. All you have to do is click links in the description or the top and comment, and you can download them instantly and get a ton of money plays because this is just one offensive formation. The entire playbook is like 50 pages long. So I'm going to go ahead and start off getting some of the run plays out of the way because there are three run plays here, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on them. I typically try to rush right through these so we can just get to the money plays, the one play touchdowns, because those are the most fun. There's not a lot to these uh, to these run plays, so I'm not going to show them a lot. But if you have a look that looks like this, where that linebacker is supposed to be right over the gap between the tackle and the guard, it's clearly some sort of man coverage, probably like a man zero blitz of some kind. You can see how it pulls him out of the way, making this inside zone a much easier look. I mean, the linebacker definitely filled there, but there's some adjustments that you can make to make that even better. So if you have a look like this and you want to step your blocking up in the direction you're going, all you have to do is motion across this B tight end. I'm going to do that a lot during the pass plays so your opponent won't notice the difference. And now you can see how it'll give me more opportunity to get to the edge. But I'm not much of a running player, I'm not going to lie. I'm typically a pass first, pass second, pass third player. But you can see that there is opportunity here when it comes to these plays. I just need this guard here to get to that second level a little better as he did right there. And now we're getting five, six yards. So it's really all about that guard. If he pulls away and moves on to the next level, you can have a very a good run from this but there's a couple of run plays that go in other directions as well the 01 trap is a run play that's probably going to be best if your opponent has a little bit more of a spread uh, defense something like a, a big nickel so if your opponent comes out in something smaller or something spread loosely like right here we got a big gap right over the center this is going to be the perfect call for something like this because you can see it lets those guys through but it only does that because it's basically letting you over commit to the point where you can just run right past them so the 01 trap specific to having a larger than normal gap over the center like we do here once again Again, same formation and you can see how everybody gets picked up and my my uh, guard there got to the next level to the point where I was basically on the he was on the safeties which is perfect here's another one this is the exact opposite we're a little bit tightly packed there's no second level defenders though so this is gonna be another opportunity where once I get past that second level this might be the better run play of the two if I'm being honest now there is one more run play the power O, which really runs more like a counter run so this is gonna be something that's gonna be best if your opponent is really over committing in one direction or the other so we're gonna force that with a formation because I can't change that necessarily uh, when it comes to being on the field. So I'm going to pick something out of the 4-3 even here. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to pick we're going to pick a random 4-3 over solid. So this play here is really going to be best for a cutback. As you can see this, and if you run this at home, you can tell that it doesn't really pull you in the direction like the typical inside zone or the Owen trap. The Owen trap pulls you forward. The inside zone pulls you to the left. This one here really lets you figure it out. I mean, I could run straight ahead. As you can see right here, that's where the hole is. Or I could cut it back to the right, making this more like a counter run. So now that we got the run plays out of the way, let's have some fun with some dink and dunk pass plays before we get to the one play touchdowns. There's really only one dink and dunk pass play in here that has no one play touchdown purpose, and that's the mesh spot. So we're going to pick that. We're going to go random once again. 
This play here, there's a lot of routes. There's a lot of options I can go with. The number one route option is going to be the running back, which is a lot like my drive H wheel from the stack, uh, gun stack Y flex. As the second he runs out, I can throw it right away, and it doesn't matter what coverage it is. That was actually a man coverage. You can tell by the way the defender is on him. I still got four yards because typically this route, if you throw it right away, will get open against anything because that's just how the route's designed. It'll get open more against zone. You'll probably have a slightly better uh, time. As you can see here, if I wait till he turns up the field, by the way, not a good idea. As you can see, if I if I throw it too late, he will be covered. So that's something you really got to get the ball out quick. But if you get it out right away, you can typically get to the sideline and get a very big, easy catch and run against anything, man or zone, which is probably my favorite part of this play. You also got the drags, which are just as unstoppable. Just about every route on this play beats both man and zone, which is really awesome because that's really what makes this play so hard to stop. The in route is delays developing, but you can hit these drag routes as we get some weird prevent defense here. <laughs> you can hit these drag routes against any man or zone. It's going to get open against any of them and if your opponent gets desperate and starts to call it well, I'm getting two two of these plays in a row if your opponent starts to get desperate and starts to call um, you know hard flats to try to take him away or starts to try to use them then you have other routes you have the X route here which is a good uh, in breaking route against man or zone that's gonna get open every single time and you have the B route which is something that once your user clears and starts chasing these drags, which here didn't happen. I'm not going to force it. But if they chase those drags, if they're the middle linebacker's time and they chase those drags, that comeback route over the middle of the field is going to be wide open. This B route will be man or zone. It really just depends. It's like right here. we got a zone coverage. He's just open, right, wide open over the middle. As every route here, like I said, beats man or zone, making this the perfect play to have in your audibles. I have another play here out of stick knot vertical, which is another very good play against man or zone, but this has a lot of one-play touchdown capabilities. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to start off with some one-play touchdown plays, starting with the stick knot vertical. We're going to go random once again. If you run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field and you don't have to be on a hash mark to the short side of the field but if you are it's going to be even more effective putting this x route on a streak will get that y route open every single time you can motion across one of these guys like if i want to motion across one of these tight ends put them on a flat route just for a check down i can do that then i have a high low concept with the uh with the y route with the corner route or i could just keep them where they are and put the put the a route on a drag it's really up to you but the bottom line is if you have a zone coverage this guy's going to be open every single time and it doesn't matter what zone coverage it is. He's not necessarily always going to beat man, but he does beat some man coverages. I don't know if I'll actually see that, but like I said, if I don't want to, you know, tip my hand with the motion, I could do this just like this. Looks like we have a man coverage here, and you see I still have an opportunity. It's not like it's 100%, but you're going to see when I get cover zero that that's going to get open every single time. Just to solidify that, we'll pick man zero again because there's a couple different routes that work against man zero blitz. Let's go, let's pick the overstone brave. Against man zero, you typically want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field because you're going to want that throwing and catching run space for that wide receiver there and you can see when i motion this guy across for whatever reason this cornerback is not man aligned properly and he never will be he's always going to be inside giving outside leverage which you don't want to do as a man coverage cornerback especially with no safety help so i don't know why this play does that but that's why the play is successful now i can shorten that route if i want to at 10 yards you can see i mean i can shorten it at eight yards if i want to but you can see how if I if I do put this um, this wire as I messed everything up, if I put this Y receiver on a smart route, it does change it by a couple of yards at 10 yards. It will break at 10 yards. And to me, if I have you know linebackers shooting in at me, I want it to, to break as quick as possible. So I typically like the smart route it. The only other adjustment you have to do is motion the X route across and put him on a slant and then check and release the running back who will stay in the block but also hold his man defender because he's on a check and release. So like I said, I should be able to get this ball out super fast. And you can see if I throw in the break, he's there every single time. And if I throw it and get enough break, I could catch and run that for a one play touchdown just from that route so I'll do that one more time because it does uh, have that ability you can see once again you can see he's not man aligned properly he's always giving up that outside shoulder which is why this play works and then like I said when he breaks on that I get it every single time and then you know it's it's clearly if I can just beat that man in one way or the other but either beat him to the edge or make him miss me it's a touchdown now, when it comes to some of these other routes the tight end and the a route um, the B and the a route are both very good routes now, the B route's probably a little bit better against man coverage, or man cover one, I'll show that in a minute, but you can see there how the uh, the in route that I put the B route, the motion B route on, actually helped to get in the way to get that tight end open. This isn't always a look you're gonna get, but if you put him on a five yard in route, you can see how he basically sets a pick on the defender. This is a pick play, you know what I mean? When I do that, and you can see now, he's running wide open up the field, making this a very easy one play touchdown. 
it probably would have been a touchdown if I would have shortened this other route. That's the only thing. But since I had a deeper route, that guy actually came back and made the play. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to try to work that route, make sure to put the, uh, the other tight end on the drag as well. And last but not least, the A route is a pretty good route as well. As you can see here, I mean, he just completely roasted that safety, uh, which is somewhat hit or miss, but it's something that's pretty consistent and it's probably my second read on the play. Now that we did man cover zero, let's go and let's do some zone coverages because this has a lot of zone potential too. So let's go and let's start off with Tampa two. Now against cover two, there's a lot of one play touchdown setups. You can motion this guy across and put him on a streak or you can motion across the A route, it really doesn't matter. Then put the X, the X route on a smoke and you're gonna see how the Y route's a very big play as he gets open over the top of the cornerback for what could be a very good catch and run. Uh, but you can also do some with the tight ends. So let's go and let's motion this guy across again. And this time we're just going to keep the A route on a streak and put the X route in smoke once again. And now he's going to hold that cornerback down for the B route. So we have really multiple options. The A route's a good option too, but I really want to go with the, uh, the, the path of least resistance, which is going to be this tight end who gets open above the cornerback and outside the safety. Now that's pretty much it for the stick knot vertical. I got two more plays to go. The PA double post must save the last because that's the most explosive play in the entire formation and one of the most explosive plays in the game. Let's go and let's do the wheel post drag next. We'll go ahead and we'll start off with random once again. Now, the reason I'm picking random is there's a couple different routes here that get open against a couple different things. Against man coverage, especially the A route's gonna be good. But if I think it's gonna be a, a zone coverage, I could streak him and the B route is gonna get open against a lot of different things. Although you can see there that I had to body him a little bit. That was actually not the plan. I wasn't even sure what defense that was. I was planning on just throwing it to the tight end with no issues. Here, this looks like it's a cover three or some sort of hybrid coverage. As you can see, once again, that streak pulls back the cornerback gets that tight end open on the short side which is going to be very key that's a very good route so i could run that against just about anything is right there i did mess up because i didn't put him i didn't put the guy on the streak but it was a straight up man coverage and you saw how he just cooked that one of the reasons this offense works so good is because tight ends are so overpowered he's going against an elite cornerback and he just just blows right through him and you can see he's got like five to ten yards of separation right away so i guess against man you don't really need to change what the a route is doing because the a route is a good route but against zone coverage, you can see that the, the importance of pulling back those deep zones. So if you, that was a zone coverage, by the way, which I made a poor read, but let's just continue to do that because I really want to work this B route here. I would say the one defense that this doesn't get open against is probably cover two, but that looked like a cover two and it got open. This route here might be just about every defense in the game. But let's go ahead and let's pick that again. We'll go defense to defense now. Let's go ahead and let's pick the Tampa two to start. Against cover two, the B route would probably be the most vulnerable. So I'm going to motion him across and put him on a streak. And we're going to try to work that uh, we're gonna try to work that Y route. So he's gonna pull back and then the Y route here, I mean, that was open right away. I could I could have threw that immediately. You can see how it shoots right for the area that this defense is weak. And it happens mostly because the cornerback reacts to that inside route. You can see here the way this receiver steps in, the cornerback follows and you can see the, how they don't cross over. They don't pass each other off very well. I could throw right now and I probably already am. As you can see the ball's out because it's just like anything else. If you're even, you're leaving. And if I get that ball out nice and quick, he's going to be able to get to that sideline and get up the uh, the side of the field for an easy one-play touchdown because the safety's going to be out of position. But that's also not the only way that this play can get open. Is you can just put the Y route here on a fade, and it'll help to get that X route open as it'll pull the safety back. I also put um, the other tight end on a 10-yard out route because it really just makes that safety chase. I mean, the, the route that we're set up with already does. Putting this tight end on a 10-yard out route just makes that even more dramatic. As you can see, See, that safety just completely abandons responsibility and now i got the whole side of the field to throw to so that definitely helps but it's not 100 percent necessary if you're not good at making adjustments but you can see that based off the fact that i did do that i mean there's nothing but space here as they eventually close but it's too late so it's two ways against cover two zone but how about cover two man so let's go and let's pick that cover two man you can do the exact same set by putting that that uh, y route on a 10 yard out route and that's all you really have to do because the y route's still going to pull the uh, safety to the outside but they also are designed to get in each other's way. Typically, uh, when you have, once again, man coverage like this, especially tight, you're gonna see this type of look where these guys just run into one another and you can see this guy gets wide open because the cornerback and the receiver cutting across just knocked that guy right off the off the mark. That cover two man setup, by the way, was one that I showed in my gameplay. Uh, if you guys wanna check that out, link in the description. Let's go and let's pick the wheel post drag one more time. This time though, we're gonna pick cover one hole because it does all different types of man coverages. This play can have success against man cover one the same way as wheel routes are usually pretty good. I mean, you can see I didn't make any adjustments here and Brown did get passed. So you don't really have to make any adjustments adjustments at all and that exact same wheel route will score. This play also has a lot of success against cover three. So it's going to pick the cover three sky. This play is extra glitchy against cover three. Uh, there's a couple different ways you could do this, but if you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field once again and smart route the X route at anything 10 yards or less, he will shorten that route enough 
that the Y route will get outside of this cornerback. You see how that cornerback bites inside, just like I showed earlier with the cover two, where he basically shoots inside on the uh, receiver crossing. You're gonna get this look against cover three as well. You can see when he comes inside that the cornerback tries to match right away and they get crossed up to the point where if I throw right away, this guy's running space. He's already even, so he's leaving with that cornerback. And you can see a really quick pass out there can basically beat the coverage like nothing. Now, if you want this to be a one play touchdown, just put the A route on a streak to try to pull back that safety. If he even goes far as the motion this guy out, you can see the safety cheats over there just a little bit. That's gonna make it that much easier to get outside of this cornerback or at least get the catch and run that I want. Like I said, it takes a good pass lead. You can't do this necessarily if you're doing classic passing, but you can see how explosive that could be if you make that right throw. This play can also have success against cover for quarters, so let's do that next. Against cover four, just put the running back in a wheel route. That's all you really got to do, and you're going to see how the X route here gets lost in translation as it's really unclear who's supposed to match with him, whether it's a safety or one of the middle linebackers. But it's easy that way because cover four sucks. Now, as crazy as some of these plays have been, the craziest and most explosive play in this formation is yet to come, and that's the PA double post. So let's go and let's pick that. We're going to start off with random here once again, a little random nickel. Now, if you think it's a man coverage, you can put the B route on a drag, and that will give you a really good high-low concept over the middle. But if you think that it's a zone coverage, you can just put the A route on a streak and he'll pull back whatever deep zone is in the area and help the B route get open. Now there, you can see actually because he came off the line so slow that the B route was pulling people back, making him get open. But that's a really good concept, uh, especially against cover two. If I do that, dragging the Y route is really helpful. As you can see right here, it looks like we have a cover two now. So that tight end is going to get open outside of that every single time. And if I do it from the hash mark to the open side of the field, I'm going to have more catch and run space, making it even easier to get a one play touchdown. But this play also has a lot of one play touchdown setups as well. So let's go and let's pick Tampa two. Against Tampa two, got a couple different options once again. Like I said, we just saw what I did with the uh, the B route. As you can see, that is a one play touchdown. We did score on that. So that's obviously something I want to point out with Tampa two again. But there are other options. Against cover two, I would say just motion this guy across, put him on a 10 yard out route put the a route on a 10 yard out route as well then just put the y route on a fade or a streak it really doesn't matter because his job is just to pull back that safety and you're going to see that once the x route gets through the garbage he's going to have an opportunity for a very big play although you can see the safety is somewhat still over the top but if i can score from 50 yards out that's probably good enough you can also motion this guy across which is something i don't think i've done very often yet and you can see how he's going to have an opportunity to the outside if you're going to do this i'd say put the a route on a flat just to try to pull that uh, that cornerback down outside. And you can see how you can get open to the outside on this side as well. This cover two is obviously not one of the better uh, coverages in the game right now. Next up, we're gonna do cover three. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. I'm gonna put the A tight end on a streak, the Y receiver on a fade, and the X receiver on a fade, although it didn't actually work. And you're gonna see how this A streaking tight end can get open right up the middle because of the way that these, uh, you know, how this is aligned. As you can see, we get a kind of a tight catch there, but it's still a very easy one-play touchdown. We have a fast enough tight end. The reason this play works and it's so unique is because the defense starts off with an unusually wide gap between the cornerback and the safety. And that's because there's no receivers on this side of the field, and cornerbacks are programmed to not respect tight ends' lack of speed. So that's why this cornerback here is only less than five yards off the line of scrimmage. Where if you look on the other side of the field, he's more like 10 or eight to 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, which is typical. So basically when this cornerback reacts to this route, which is gonna be a deep enough route that's gonna pull his attention away a little bit to the outside, away from the streak, that basically puts this uh, safety in no man's land where he's got to stay in the middle between the two streaks, making this tight end an option. As you can see, we can bullet and pass lead up the middle of that seam enough that we get a basically enough catch and run space to get a touchdown from anywhere on the field. You can get a crossing look too. If you want to motion across this tight end, put him on a streak, then also put the X route on a fade. And you're going to have a pretty similar look, although you're just going to have to wait for this Y route to cross. And you can see how this guy can get open the same way just as long as we get a good throw i mean that throw was actually a little bit underthrown, but you can see how that can be a one play touchdown as well so two one play touchdowns against cover three it's going to pick that and do cover four cup for quarters cup for quarters is super easy you just got to put the running back on a wheel and that will uh typically get the wire out just like straight up forgotten as you can see i don't i don't know what's going on there but that's probably the easiest way to do that is cover four is just terrible 
So I'm gonna end the video there. If you guys wanna see uh, more breakdowns, more full offensive breakdowns, make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. I typically put more practice mode style stuff on my second channel, although I haven't put any Madden 24 content on there yet. But if you wanna see more practice mode videos like this, I will have more on them in the, in the coming days. So make sure to check that out. I'll have a link in the description and in the comments if you guys wanna find my second channel. Other than that, if you guys want to see gameplay of me using this offense, I'm going to have it popping up on each side of my head here. These are the two times that I use this in gameplay, and I got to use quite a few of these one-play touchdowns in those videos. So make sure to check those out if you want to see that. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.